welcome to Watch Symposium. I'm Austin, and this is a custom video for Kevin. He writes, Hey Austin, first of all, I just want to thank you for your work and great content. I've been watching a lot of your videos for the last year. I enjoy it and am a fan of yours. Thank you, Kevin. I really do appreciate that. My watch enthusiasm started around four years ago when I received my grandfather's watch. It was a long jeans Lungamare or Lungamade chronograph quartz 42 millimeter reference L3.633.4 with a white dial on a bracelet. I was around 20 years old at the time and I thought it was nice and felt really good wearing it because I had not worn a proper watch before. All right, so that was four years ago. He was 20, so he's 24 years old right now. I remember that it was too loose and the battery was dead, so I went to the local watch store and they refitted the bracelet and made a battery change. After a couple of weeks on the wrist, I thought the watch was a bit too dressy for me and too big too but I did not notice that at the time. So again, this is a 42 millimeter watch and it doesn't look too blingy for me, but you know, sometimes those polished surfaces can bring attention to the watch and maybe we're not comfortable with it. So I get it. The watch was too blingy with the highly polished parts. Therefore, I decided to look for a new watch and went back to the store and bought myself a new watch, which at that time I thought would be my only watch. It was a Certina DS Action Diver 43 millimeter reference C013407A on a steel bracelet. For the past couple of years, I have worn it a lot, almost every day. I enjoyed the automatic movement of this watch. Over the years, I have gotten knowledge of watches and my taste has changed. So he bought a usable watch. He thought it would be his one watch. It kind of reminds me of getting my Orient Blue Mako, which I thought this could be it. It could satisfy me. Well, it didn't satisfy me. And this watch, while it served him well, I think doesn't quite satisfy him either. I think he wants something a little bit better. And as we'll see, he gets it. Interesting this Certina is a 43 millimeter watch, yeah, it's okay, whereas the 42 millimeter long jeans wasn't. I think it has to do a lot with the bezel and on rotating informational bezels. You can get away with bigger watches. So I love 40 millimeter watches when you're talking an informational bezel. If it doesn't have that, like the long jeans, for me, 36, 38 is the sweet spot. And so that could be coming to play. And so when we talk about his options in the future, he wants to keep it at 40, but, you know, this was a 43 millimeter Certina he was wearing. So keep that in mind. It might be all about the informational bezel. I have a friend, William, and he wanted me to say hi to William. Hi, William who has a Rolex watch reference 116610LN. That's the recently discontinued ceramic date sub with the thicker lugs, the fat boy case. And it got me fascinated by the design and high quality. I like everything about it except the magnifying glass, the Cyclops, which makes it asymmetric. That's Something that some people like is very characteristic of Rolex watches, but it can, you know, mess with the balance of the dial. I went to the local Rolex AD and asked them to put me on the waiting list for the no date reference 114060. So that's the no date counterpart to William's watch. Around 12 months later, I was lucky to receive a phone call from the AD saying they had a watch waiting for me at their store. I enjoyed my Rolex purchase and get so much fun out of it. I love everything about it, especially the micro adjustment, which got me the perfect fit this summer. The problem is I don't wear it as much as I want to. I hate the risk of a potential robbery. Of course, I choose my occasions, but I am still feeling a bit worried, which is very sad. When I don't wear the Rolex, I'm watchless because 
I don't like my other watches. All right, so look, that's kind of the double-edged sword with Rolex watches. They are so awesome, so desirable that it can make you at least feel like a target, if not actually be a target. And just a quick note, Kevin, one of the safest places for your watch is on your wrist, okay? So if you're leaving it at home, that's probably one of the worst things you could do, depending on where you live, all right? If you're walking around in the bad parts of town, all right, leave it at home. But if you're just going around your daily life and you don't live in a really dangerous area, then actually on your wrist is probably the best place for it. So think about leaving it at home to keep it safe only to come home and your home has been broken into, your watch is gone, you would have been better off having it on your wrist and enjoying it. So keep that in mind. But he brings up a really interesting point and that is how valuable these things are and how desirable they are and how because of that, they're not so wearable. And it's a risk and it can stress us out. And as you know, I love traveling with my watches. And, you know, I don't know if I really can as much anymore. I just, I don't feel as comfortable. And, and I've always thought if you can afford to lose what you have on your wrist, go for it. Have fun with it. Take it out. Now, they've gotten really expensive. And I don't know that I could have afforded to lose a $5,000 watch, but now that they're approaching 10,000 USD, I'm, I'm less comfortable with the idea of losing my watch. And the idea of cavalierly wearing it when I travel is just not something I'm comfortable with. Added to that, the emotional investment I have in these watches, a lot of them, the Explorer 2, I've made a lot of memories with that watch. And so while I could replace it, I could never replace it. And so in a way that sort of has made me question whether I ever want to travel with that watch again, which is crazy because that was my travel watch. And I think that's part of how Kevin feels. It's it's the stress of what could happen to your watch. And we're not talking about wear or taking care of it or banging on desks or door frames. We're talking about other people. It's sort of like a motorcycle. If you're talking a motorcycle, they're not that dangerous if you're just talking to yourself. You know, a dirt bike off on your own land you'll probably be okay. It's the other drivers, it's the other people that you gotta watch out for on the road. They're the people that can mess you up. And while a Submariner can go anywhere and do anything, it's the other people around you in the society that you have to worry about and that can stress you out. And so I totally hear what he's saying and I feel the same way because these watches have gotten so desirable that to me and to Kevin, they're starting to feel unwearable. And again, it's not us, it's, it's the people around us. It's the stories we hear, whether it's blown out of proportion or not. These are watches that can be flipped for cash super quick and they're easily identifiable. And it's not that hard for a group of people to wrestle it off your wrist. So it's just something we gotta think about. That's what Kevin's thinking about and uh, that has come into play about my recent purchase, which I'm gonna make a video about this because Sock Monkey asked, man, why the hell did you buy this thing? And I thought, you guys deserve an explanation, but that's a good part of it right there. All right, so, therefore, I'm looking for a new watch as a compliment, something that I can wear everywhere and not be afraid of wearing. I'm looking for a watch in the size of 36 to 40 millimeters and the price range of 500 to 2000 USD. The ironic thing is he has it, that Certina, all right? But again, there's three aspects, if not more, to owning a watch. The functionality, the form, and the X factor. And the X factor is so important, how it makes you feel. The Certina just doesn't make him feel like he's wearing a great watch because he's wearing a good watch and a decent watch, but it's not a great watch. It's not a watch with an X factor that makes him buzz. And he's trying to get that for under two grand, all right? He says, although 2K is a lot, I feel safer with that kind of money on my wrist. And again, that's probably for him 
a figure where if he were to lose it, he'd be okay, all right? It would be an easy, easily replaceable watch. Forget about the emotional scars you would you would feel from having any of your watches taken off of you, okay? That's gonna take more than two grand to, to get over, all right? But as far as being stressed out about the watch, yeah, 2000, I think, is, is a good figure for me because easily replaceable, this sub, not easily replaceable, even money-wise, would be tough to actually, well, you know, get it for that price again. So my interest in vintage watches has grown. For example, the Omega Seamaster 300 meter, 36 millimeter automatic reference 2551.80.00 from the late 90s. That's a 36 millimeter watch. I would go 40, okay? Another example is Seiko. The high beat movement is fascinating to me. The GS56 but I think it is too dressy with a strap. Plus, if you're caught in the rain, that's gonna be a problem and you're gonna worry about getting that strap wet. So I wouldn't go with a leather strap. I would go with a, a metal bracelet. Maybe there's another more sporty high beat watch out there. I'm also interested in a GS Grand Seiko reference SBGR001 on a bracelet. Okay, that would give you your metal bracelet. You wouldn't have to worry about getting it wet, swimming with it, being caught in rain. It would be much more wearable. So that's definitely something I would think about. But it's, you're 24 and, you know, it's not really a, a, a cool, fun, sporty looking watch. And that's the style you like. Think about your grail which i think you have the sub and think about your certina this looks like this could be your grandfather's watch this gs you don't have the bezel to play with you know i don't know if it's going to have that x factor for you it wouldn't for me all right so i would probably avoid that watch although it would tick off your boxes it wouldn't be so expensive it would be very wearable but again this is going to have that x factor only you can answer that I like the design of the Tag Hour 1000, but I think it's a bit too much with the gold two-tone. I would avoid that. I think it looks cheap and it looks like you're going for bling but couldn't quite afford to do it properly. Unfortunately, my knowledge of these kind of watches are pretty low and I'm a bit concerned about the authenticity of vintage watches overall. Replace parts, service cost, etc but I think I'm willing to take the risk. If not, I need to go and get a brand new watch, for example, a GS SBGX261 with a quartz movement. Although that's a nice watch, it feels kind of boring to me. There you go, there you go, it's boring. It doesn't have that X factor for you. You're thinking about it with your head and it's saying, well, it's a logical purpose, but your heart's saying, man, it doesn't do anything for me. If you're saying that before you have the watch, after you have the watch, it's gonna do even less for you. So avoid that. These Grand Seikos are not the way you should go. They're, they're not the watches that are turning you on. It's pretty clear to me. I wanna take my watch interest to the next level and your advice, thoughts, and suggestions are very welcome, Austin. Sincerely, Kevin. Thank you, Kevin, for this custom video request. It looks like you're looking for a beater and the strange thing, you have a beater, you have the Certina, but you're looking for a beater that has that X factor and turns you on. And you're looking essentially for an inexpensive watch, sub 2000 USD that turns you on as much as the sub you have. And likely you're not gonna find it because a lot of that X factor is it's gotta hurt. It's gotta feel special. And it's gotta feel rare or tough to get or expensive. And so to get that X factor that I think you're looking for, it's, it's kind of tough. And we'll throw out some ideas, but 2000 is not a lot to work with. You're talking beater territory. And you cannot get a Rolex watch for 2000. Not even a 6694, not even a bubble back. A couple years ago, yeah, but these days, no men's Rolexes or no Rolexes that 
a man could wear for this kind of money. And I know that is not what you're looking for. You're not looking for a Rolex. I'm just saying that, that, you know, Rolex prices have gone up and that goes for the bubble backs and the 6694 34 millimeter date watches that you used to be able to get for a thousand to two thousand and they've gone up. And so what is a watch that could turn you on? Well, for me, the Hydronaut, it's got that Rolex DNA because it's a Tudor. You can find them on eBay for sometimes a great price. In fact, check this price out. Now, I was so tempted to bet on this watch. It was here in Japan, but I thought, do I need another one, a third? And I passed it up. But the buyer got a great price, and he can take that to RSC. He can have it serviced, polished. He can have a dial put in, and he's still all in around a little over 2000 I want to say. And again, you've got a great watch with that Rolex DNA, that Rolex connection. And I talk a lot about Hydronauts and there's a reason because they offer incredible bang for buck. We're talking on eBay, a sub 2000 USD watch. Now, do you have to worry about uh, messed with Hydronauts? To be honest, not so much because, you know, sketchy people really aren't dealing in Hydronauts. Okay, it's not a really desirable watch. Why is it not desirable? I don't know. It's a 40 millimeter watch. It's a dive watch. It's beautiful. The Hydronaut 2, not so much. Hydronaut 1, I think it's a beautiful watch. And again, it's got that connection to Rolex, very wearable, ETA movement, easily serviced. I would not service it anywhere but RSC, but you know, it's a refined ETA movement with perlage on it and everything. And so that is a great option right there. And so you could either get one for around two grand or you could get a real bargain basement one and then have it worked on and serviced and have a dial put in that you love. And there's a lot of cool dials uh, to choose from. So that's one option, okay? And I would also look to other types of tutors on the pre-owned market, all right? Now, if you're talking Grand Seiko, I would steer you away from these sort of old man Grand Seiko models and, and towards the, the more dive watch versions. There's the SBGX335, which has a black dial, the SBGX337 with a blue dial, and those are 43.6 millimeter watches, but that's the aesthetic I think that's gonna turn you on more. And we're talking new four grand, all right? On the used market, you could probably get it for less. It would be a stretch, but again, you'd much rather have that watch stolen than your sub, all right? It's half the price of your sub, brand new, okay? And I wanna say that these are, I'm pretty sure that we're talking about a spring drive or perhaps a quartz, but it's gonna be a very accurate watch and it's gonna have that that buzz of a Grand Seiko. Again, not the buzz of Rolex, but nothing is, including a Tudor, okay? But again, it would be a really nice watch and buying one pre-owned could be uh, something that works. Now, size-wise, when it comes to the Grand Seiko, the SBGE255, that's a GMT watch, would, which would work great and is beautiful. It's 40.5 uh, millimeters. It's got a thickness of 14.7 millimeters, so it's a little thick, but it's a beautiful watch. I was so impressed with this watch when I saw it, and they've got a green version, they've got a, a blue version, they've got a, yeah, the, the one that I mentioned was the blue version, which is absolutely beautiful. Um, now, this is an expensive watch. This is six to seven grand. You could probably get it for five grand on the used market, and again, it's a Seiko, so it's not going to attract the criminal element like a Submariner would, but it's a great watch, but it's kind of outside of your price range. But again, ask yourself, if I wear this watch, even though it is, you know, five grand on the pre-owned market, am I going to feel worried about people taking it? And I wouldn't. I could wear this watch everywhere. And look, it's, it's kind of easily replaceable, more so than the, the sub. And... Look, I don't think a lot of people are going to case you out and, and, and go after that watch. You know, Rolexes these days 
you can see them a mile away, and they just scream opportunity to criminals, okay? And so I don't think this watch would. So you could sort of have your, your beater and your good watch with a lot of X factor, but of course it wouldn't be, it wouldn't be uh, under 2000. And again, you gotta ask yourself, could I go over the 2000 if I'm gonna be less worried about the watch? And, and I think you could, and this would be a watch that I would be much less worried about. All right, and so there you go. Those are some options for you. I would go for a dive watch. You're 24, it's a sporty look, it's the aesthetic I like, and the Hydronaut is well within your budget. The question is, how is it gonna make you feel? Is it gonna give you that X factor? Can you find a good one on eBay? They do come up. And would you feel safe with it? That's the question. Now, as far as these Grand Seikos, they're another option. I don't think you're gonna be as at risk with these watches, even though they're gonna cost more. Are they gonna give you that X factor? For me, no. I mean, uh, again, I would, I would go with the Hydronaut, and I have gone with the Hydronaut or two. And now that's a watch that I would feel totally comfortable with wearing pretty much anywhere in the world. So that would be my pick. Are there other watches out there? Omegas, absolutely. Tag Heuer's, absolutely. The question is, is it going to uh, check off that X factor that I think you're looking for? Viewers, help him out. What are some ideas that that would give him a great alternative to his Submariner, but without making him feel like he's he's risking so much by wearing it out. Something that he can be more comfortable with, but still gives him that buzz. Put a comment in the comment section, help out Kevin. Kevin, thank you for the custom video. Take care, thanks for watching everybody, and I'll see you in the next video.